Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ruben Banger, and I am the Big Data Infrastructure and Operations Manager at British Gas, which is part of the Centrica Group. Uh, thank you for joining my session, which today is Rocking the World of Big Data at Centrica. So I'm going to start my presentation with a quote from Whitney Young. So Whitney Young was a American civil rights leader in the 1960s in America who was trying to bring about change within American culture and remove employment discrimination within corporate America. And he said, change has a considerable impact on the human mind. To the fearful, it is threatening because it means things may get worse. To the hopeful, it is encouraging because it means things may get better. To the confident, it is inspiring because the challenge exists to make things better. So I'd like you to keep that quote in mind during the course of this presentation. So we're living in a new age, the age of the millennial generation, typified by traits such as being highly ambitious, highly confident, highly educated, technologically savvy. And in recent times, we've seen a, an acceleration in societal changes due to things such as social media, mobile computing, smartphones, new technologies. And as a result of that, we all live in a much more connected world. So when we were all growing up, for those of you that remember, we used to have to wait for our favorite TV show to be shown on television, to be shown on a particular channel, on a particular day, at a particular time. Today, we watch what we want, when we want, where we want. And as a result of that, as a society, we are very much used to instant gratification. We have, as a society, many options available to us, which means that we are pretty much spoilt for choice. And therefore, we are all very hard to please. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Centrica. So this is our corporate strategy, our kind of corporate headline. So we are an energy and services company, and everything we do is about focused on satisfying the changing needs of our customers. There's two important things there the satisfying and the changing aspect of things. So for those of you that don't know much about us, we're a multinational utility company. We're a FTSE 100 company. Last year we made 28 billion pound revenue, 1.5 billion pound operating profit, 28 million customer accounts, and over 38,000 employees worldwide. So by all accounts, we're big. Centrica is made up of a number of prominent and successful brands. We have Direct Energy, based in North America. We have Broadcast Energy, based right here in Ireland. We have Dyno, for home care services in the UK. We have Centrica Storage and Centrica, that deal with energy storage and energy trading. We have Hive, please don't confuse that with Apache Hive. And then last but not least, we have British Gas themselves, and that's the brand that I work for, which I'm gonna give you more insight into. So British Gas is the UK's leading energy and home services provider. We service more than 11 million homes and businesses across the UK who all rely on us for their energy needs. We operate a national network of trusted engineers. 
And we've developed a number of innovations, such as the Hive app, which allow our customers to control their heating from their mobile phone. We've also made a commitment to our customers to have smart metering in place by 2020. I'm just going to play you a short video now around smart metering. Imagine a future where you can see your energy as you use it. A future where bills are no longer estimated. A future where you have greater understanding of your energy. We're talking about a future where you can compare your home's energy efficiency with others. That future is here, and it's all thanks to the smart meter. Smart meters come with a handy smart energy monitor that displays your energy as you use it and provides an indication of what it's costing you in pounds and pence. Current gas and electricity meters will be replaced by smart meters, which use wireless technology to send meter readings. They also signal the end of estimated bills. To help you on your way to a more energy efficient home, we're providing all our customers with smart meters with a personalized breakdown of their energy use, featuring top energy saving tips. So you might start turning appliances off overnight when you see just how much you can save. We're heading towards a smarter future, and smart meters are just the beginning. The home of the future, where you'll be able to control your lights, central heating, security cameras and more with a smartphone, will soon be a reality. By connecting household devices to the internet, you'll have greater control of your energy use, making life more convenient, comfortable and cheaper for all. Now that's smart. So I work for the information systems department within British Gas. And we underpin most of the organization for application development, design, and physical infrastructure. And everything that we do within our department impacts Centrica at every level. And all of our innovations are all about making our customer lives simpler. And we have led the big data innovation within British Gas. So why did we do this for? Why did we start this journey into big data for? So I've put a quote up from our strategic director, Daljit Rihal. And he talks about how we were trying to get a single view of our customer. And with all the data that is produced by our customers nowadays, how do we get that view when you've got structured and unstructured data sets? And he talks about how in the internet of things in this new paradigm, the traditional technologies weren't really a good fit, and we had to go beyond that. There's obviously a, other reasons as well why we went down this line for, from big data perspective. There was existing high costs for upgrading our existing infrastructure. There was data load issues from source into our MI estate. The turnaround time for delivering data to the new business was, to the business was high. Um, and the system landscape was overly complicated we had a, many systems that would break and the integration points would be, were many, as this diagram shows. It's quite a complicated background. This is going back a few years, by the way. So, a couple of years ago, at our strategic systems conference, our... Uh, Director Daljit gave us all Raspberry Pis and said, go and innovate. So we built ourselves a small Apache cluster. So this was uh, a group of people, including graduates and apprentices, and we encouraged them to innovate. And that's what they came up with. We then found some disused laptops and built a slightly larger cluster. Again, building up our knowledge in-house, skilling up in-house. From there, we realized the potential, and we built our first 10-node POC cluster, from which we were able to prove existing processing of telephony data 
was run much quicker and more efficiently. And that formed the basis of our business case. So we decided to go, well, let's say go big or go home. And IT doesn't get much sexier than that, does it? <laughs> so why did we choose Hortonworks on this journey? What was the reason why we chose Hortonworks? So Hortonworks have a, have a manifesto of 100% open source commitment. And when a company makes that kind of a statement, from a cultural perspective, you'd expect that company, from a thinking and cultural perspective, to be open, honest, and flexible. And when we started this journey a couple of years ago, the existing landscape wasn't very mature. So we wanted to work with someone who is going to be flexible enough and move with us on any direction that we went on. And we didn't want to get involved with someone who had proprietary software, and then we went down a certain direction and realized this isn't going to work for us and be stuck down that direction. So we felt that Hortonworks was a more open source commitment, were the best partners for us. And to date, it's been a very good relationship. It's worked very well. Also, at the start of the conversations, Hortonworks had some strong alliances with our, with our strategic partners, such as SAP and H HP. So that meant the conversations were easier to have because they were already at the table. And obviously, there's the aspect of value as well. So we've been operational now for over 18 months in a BAU capacity. We've got a very large user community. We have a variety of user cases. We've done a number of successful platform migrations and upgrades. So from, from our perspective, we consider HTTP or Hadoop itself to be mature now. We've also seen a number of changes in the marketplace and the industry it's in, in itself as well, where we're seeing the relationships being moving forward. So for example, you've got cloud partnerships, with Hortonworks, um, Microsoft are partnering with, partnering with them now in terms of what the, the offer is available to us. And those, those offers weren't there when we started this journey a couple of years ago. So as a result, we're seeing the wider industry mature a lot more. We're also using HCF within our smart infrastructure. Um, we're seeing a lot of success from this product so far today. And we can see going forward the potential for this product and we're interested very much in terms of the direction of this. So, how well did we do? I'd like to share some successful user cases with you. So, a typical bill, before we had all of our data in one place, as you can see, it doesn't really tell you too much about where your money's going. We've also got a traditional kind of reporting informa information here, which was low in information, didn't really tell us much. Today, we have our Smart Energy Report, which gives our customers a lot more information on their energy usage. It breaks it up for them on a time basis, it tells them how they compare to other houses in their street. So we're giving our customers more information on their energy usage, allowing them to make better decisions. Another use case, our engineers view on their devices before we had all of our data in one place. Their information was just related to the task at hand. So it's quite limited in terms of what they were going to in, when they went to a customer's house and what they saw. Today, using our Pulse platform, then engineers can see if there's been any recent discussions between the call center and the customer. They can see what products that customer has in their house. They can see if that customer has made any complaints. They can see if there's any leads. 
So by providing all of our data in one place, we've been able to provide our engineers with this data, which allows them to give our customers a much more successful journey. We've also been able to produce more powerful dashboards in terms of our broken promise payments. We've been able to meet those regulatory payments in a much more efficient manner. In terms of our smart meter installs, we're able to say exactly how those installs are going from a geographical perspective. Then we also have some examples of our customer testimonials, all talking about how the actual MIS state is now a lot more simpler, how having all our data in one place allows them to give a better customer experience. And of course, we're award winning. We get a lot of terms today in this big data world about how do, you, how do we do big data. And I've put a couple of terms up. People talk about working in an agile methodology. People talk about continuous integration, continuous testing, continuous delivery. People talk a lot about DevOps too. So DevOps, what is it? Some people say it's a methodology. Some people say it's a culture. Some people say it's a movement. Some people say it's a practice. A lot of people say it's a salary bracket. And then some people say it's like true love. You'll just know. For me, the DevOps equation, for all you data scientists out there, DevOps equals time efficiency. So I want to come back to the initial part of my presentation when I talked about the millennial generation and, and how we live in an instant gratification society. If you have a development process which is taking months before it becomes operational, the likelihood in today's society, in the world we live in, is that your customer is going to get bored, the requirements will change, or they'll go to someone else who can give them what they want. So DevOps is about reducing the time from development to operations, so that you can meet the requirements of your customers in an instant gratification society. So these terms around continuous integration, development, delivery, and so forth, agile, they're not only a technological challenge, they're also a business process and cultural challenge too. Because one doesn't work without the other. So what does the future hold for us? So for us, Success breeds success. So we are collaborating now across all of our brands in Centrica. They're all looking for us to lead that big data innovation. Um, and I think as a business, we, we are seen as a big success in terms of what we've done. We're also looking now in terms of cloud at reducing our physical data center footprint we're looking at cloud for that stretch and offload cap capability and around managing cost. And with cloud, it obviously will mean that it will bring about new business processes as well. So what was the secret to our success? For me, because the data strategy was driven from sea level with strong leadership from our strategic director, It meant that we were able to get this solution implemented successfully. Without that level of engagement and stakeholder engagement into your kind of big, big data project, you're simply not going to be able to get past the cultural challenge and organizational challenges that are in front of you. 
Because for me, big data is not only a technological revolution, it's an organization and cultural challenge. And to ensure success, you need to challenge the status quo and inspire your organization and your staff to do things better. So I want to come back to the first slide and just finish off with this one. See, Whitney Young believed that he could change American culture using business. I think for those of you that are already on the big data journey, and for those of you yet to embark on the big data, big data journey, are you ready for the challenge to make things better? Thank you. Has anybody got any questions? Yeah, sure. So we've got a um, so we've got a a large on-premise environment around around 250, 300 nodes. So we've got that with one of our suppliers. We hold it with one of our suppliers. Uh, we we support it all in-house. From that perspective, we've scaled up all of our in staff internally. Um, We've got a Hortonworks PS, service, PS as well for part of that. We've got a Hortonworks support contract in place. Um, but generally, we've skilled our staff up in-house and we support it all internally. Would you like more details around that? Is that a central team or do you have that team within different business functions? It's a central team. Um, so by having all your data in one area, you'll have one team that's effectively going to look after it, right? So... That's the way we operate it. So we've purposely kept it quite small. Um, so we've got, uh, in terms of an, uh, we, we have an operations division, which is 24-7 uh, with one of our partners. Um, so we normally have around about four people on site for that and a larger team offshore. Um, but from an infrastructure perspective, We've got um, a handful of admins who basically administer the actual platform. Uh, we, we, we run it in that way because it just works out in a more efficient manner, to be honest. So it's not a very big team, but we've got a lot of flex to go outwards from there, but we've kept it quite small and niche. Yeah, we've got a... We've got a whole data science team who does all aspects of analytics and uh, we've got, I mean, from, from, a, from a data strategy perspective, the platform itself is viewed as the future for the, for the organization. So all data is coming to the platform. Um, uh, we've got Twitter feeds which are coming into the platform, which we do analysis on. So there's all different types of data, we do all different types of analysis, and we've got a number of different kind of algorithms that we run on the platform from a data science perspective. Um, there's a lot of different user cases on, on that side of things. Hi. In the beginning, you us your How is it now? I've got, uh, I've got another slide for that, but I haven't got it with me. But um, basically, it's just... So in terms of how it looks now... We just have a, a very large data lake. Um, and within the data lake, we, we've got layers within that for representing data to customers in a pre-aggregated format. Uh, and people will consume that from a self-service perspective. So the way the methodology and the thinking behind it was, was that I think prior to this, people were asking us for the data and what we've done now is we've given them the, we've given them the data and said, here you go, you, you decide how you want to see it, how you want to view it. So it works in a very much a self-serve approach, so it's a lot simpler. There's no kind of, um, the integration points are only from source into data lake, that's it. So it's a lot simpler in terms of that. Yeah, so we, we have, a, we have a, um, you know, an existing 
infrastructure, which is, um, you know, we, there's, there's always going to be a place for the traditional legacy systems, uh, but we're kind of reducing our footprint on that, and moving more of our data usage into the data lake. Yeah, right now it coexists. Um, so from the front end perspective, those dashboards were predominantly written in applications such as ClickView. Um, we, we have um, a number of other users who work in a self-serve capacity. Uh, for, from a reporting perspective, we provide that, that to people for consumption. We've done a lot of in-house development for, um, uh, for tooling to enable people to come and see their data. So in terms of the estate itself, we've just completely simplified it and made it a lot more kind of self-serve. That's the direction that we've gone in. Any more questions? Hi. So we, no, we've, we've, had a, we, we've worked very closely with our information securities department and um, everything we've done. Um, you know, oh, when we started this journey, uh, the, the security and the governance aspect of it was a big deal, right? So we keep all of that, we, we keep them very close to us. Um, but you've got tooling right now within the cluster, things like Ranger, which basically mean that we're able to meet all of, the, all of those regulatory requirements. Um, and we're happy where we are from a kind of government perspective, government's perspective. Um, you know, we've recently, we've run a number of auditing internally within, within the department. So we're in a good place from that, from that, kind of, from that side of things. I think the main message that, um, that the, the talk I'm trying to, from the talk I'm trying to say as well is, is that the technology itself is, it's mature. Um, I think people get quite scared because they say, you know, you need to think about governance and security, well, those toolings and all, that mess, all of that stuff's in there, right? You've just got to implement it. You've got to use it in the right way and implement it in the right, in the right way so that your business meets those requirements. So that's not, a, that's not a technological challenge. It's a business process, an organizational challenge, because what you'll generally find is, is that with this technology, people are, are scared of it because they don't know about it. So they don't know about how to hold those security requirements and how that fits into the new world. So it's an education piece more than anything else. That's what I'd say in response to that. So there's it's definitely an aspect of getting data in from legacy systems. I mean, we're, we're trying to come up with that single view of our customer, right? So it's all, it's all about reducing our footprint in some ways and other systems, but there's still a, there's still a place for, for traditional systems to play. But in, from an MI perspective, we need to get as much data into our data lake as possible so we can have a full 360 view of our customer and thereby you know, provide a much better kind of experience for them, um, have a much better view of them, from a, and which fits into our kind of corporate strategy about meeting those changing and satis satisfying and meeting those changing needs, in effect. Yep. So we get it directly from source. How do you do that? Don't so uh, we uh, use a combination of um, uh, ODI and uh, Golden Gate to bring in the data. So that means that we've got, uh, from where we are right now, it's a real time streaming. So, so when you say, is it getting changed? I mean, generally the, the data that's being brought in is being brought in from an MI perspective for insights. Or, uh, so we're not really looking at 
changing data. It's more about bringing it into one place so we can get that insights. Um, we're not doing that much of in terms of changing data apart from when we try and aggregate it. So we may aggregate our data to present it in a much better format, but that's the way. Yeah. Yeah, so because it's a real-time ingestion from our core systems, that will just naturally come through into the data lake. Yeah, so any change will automatically come through straight into our data lake. Has anyone got any more questions? So, so in terms of the, the DevOps the reason why I kind of, it was a, bit, a little bit of tongue in cheek about the, the DevOps side of things, because no one really, people have come up with a DevOps term, but no one has been able to kind of articulate what does it mean. When we started this journey, we were working in the DevOps model, because we, we, in, we were innovating internally, right? So we skilled up our own staff internally, um, and, gave, and we encouraged them to, you know, the graduates, the apprentices that we brought in, we encouraged them to work in a DevOps mentality. Um, where they were effectively um, developing and putting stuff live in operations. So we very much still do work in that kind of culture. Um, it's a culture that we promote, this kind of fast-fail methodology. Um, we're, we're very much about uh, this agile methodology and very much about just you know, focusing on the customer, focusing on their needs, and making those changes more quickly in an operational environment. We've got a, you know, a very challenging release schedule on a, on a weekly basis, but that's the, that's the nature of DevOps. Um, and I think because, because as a department we've been structured in such a way to give us a lot of, a lot of um, freedom and flexibility around that, we've been able to work in that capacity. Now, when I talk about DevOps um, for other businesses out there, it's, it's a challenge for other businesses from a div de, dev, big data perspective because if you look to implement DevOps within other traditional businesses out there, they'd have to restructure their organization to make those changes and work in that capacity. Um, so I think we're quite lucky in the way that we work, in the way that we operate, and that's why we looked at from the wider business as a success and they're looking at us to see how we can promote that outwards in the wider Centrica group. Any more questions? Okay, thanks very much.